Hey there, I'm Joe Weems. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you about NGConf 2023 happening in Salt Lake City, Utah on June 14th and 15th. Head over to ngconf.org to check out the speakers, check out the talks, and to get your ticket before they all sell out. We'll see you there. How's everybody doing on this Friday? I'm, I always ha I seem to get a Friday talk, and I'm always a little bummed because we got to go home after the end of the day, you know. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about collaboration, and I had this big monologue planned. I, I don't know if you call it a monologue, but you know, like you get up and you try to make a joke that fails and it doesn't work. And it, as I walked in, I realized that although we're going to talk about the tech side of collaboration. How many have had a chance in person to collaborate with someone else at the conference this week? Anyone? Team members, you know, like I have this stupid problem that won't go away, those type of things. And I just, before I get into the tech side of it, I want to say thanks for coming because it has been amazing to talk with everybody in person. And, you know, the first day I'm like, you're not a screen, right? Like I don't want to pinch you or something. Um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and kick things off, but it's been great. I really enjoyed talking with a lot of you. So um, we're going to talk about collaboration, but as I mentioned, it's, it's, collaboration is like this big buzzword that, especially over the last two years, it's completely abused, I think, because everybody thinks of collaboration differently. What is it? Well, if I ask this group over here, you're probably going to go, ah, well, you know, I'm on Slack, and I use that, or maybe some of you use Teams, or, and, and yeah, that's collaboration. But what if we could actually get collaboration more into our apps? And a few years back, I actually talked about this, but it was super new, super alpha. And now what we're going to talk about is kind of ready for prime time. So let's dive on in here and uh, talk about it. So again, my name is Dan Wallin, and we're going to talk about something called the Fluid Framework, which is an open source framework that you can use in your Angular apps. Um, very easy to get started, at least I hope you'll think so by the time I get done. So we'll go ahead and dive in here. So when I talk about collaboration, um, let's say that this group right here, you're gonna represent Tina, all right? And this group way over here, because we gotta have some network latency across, um, you're gonna be Tim. And the group in the middle, you're like the data flowing back and forth. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult, but um, you're in the middle. So now Tina sends some data in. It comes over here, and I, I should have done the wave thing, right? That'd be like the data flowing. Comes over here. And then, you know, Tim does something, it comes over here. And what happens when you start running into each other in the middle? It gets a little challenging. So, for example, we might do a really simple thing, like a to-do app, and I'm going to show you how we could do that, actually. As we're adding items, we're dragging and dropping, maybe we can even type at the same time, okay? So you're typing, you're typing, now you guys are just like, you know, running into each other, kind of crazy. There you go, thank you, thank you, I get some real typing up here. Um, how do you solve that? because you get a lot of conflicts. Now, the first thought that comes to mind is WebSockets, but it, that's like you're talking, I'm talking, it's not really a conversation, we're talking over each other because there's no way for the data to sync up properly if it's just messages, it's boom, boom, boom. So what could you build if you had a way to make this side talk to that side and have the data flow appropriately? Well, you could build a lot of things. Maybe you just want to uh, actually add meeting notes directly into your app, but you don't want them to go off to Google Docs or Word or whatever. You actually want to do it right in the app. That would be possible with what we're going to talk about. You literally could emulate everybody in this room typing at the same time. That might get a little weird, but you could do it. Uh, how many have a data grid? That was kind of a dumb question. Anyone have a data grid? Everybody's like, no, we don't do that, you know? And then AG Grid's like, get him off the stage. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we all have data grids, right? Well, what if you could collaborate across the, uh, with that data grid where, again, you're in some cell and you're in some cell and this row and we could sync all that up? 
uh, appropriately. Or maybe just want to do like an agenda, to-do list, and I'll even have some kind of bigger examples towards the end. All right, so here's an example of using what we're going to talk about. We're going to kind of, I'm going to show you how you could build this out pretty quickly. So notice we can just add to-dos and then you can drag and drop. Um, there's a way to see who's in this and how that's working as far as like their cursor position, uh, stuff along those lines. So to do this, WebSockets could handle a lot of it, but again, there's going to be scenarios where you're typing maybe in the same text box or text area uh, or in the grid cell or whatever it may be. So to get started to do something like that and much more, um, we could use something called the Fluid Framework. Now, this is a project that's been going for years now. Uh, it's an open source project again, and it came out of attempts over the years to make this work, but it's more challenging than you might actually think, at least until you get into it. This simplifies it and kind of abstracts all the complexities away. So the Fluid Framework, this is kind of the official definition, uh, allows multiple clients to simultaneously create and operate on shared data structures. Now, we're all used to data structures in JavaScript. And I'm going to ask another question I'm sure nobody uses. How many use arrays? Yeah. There, that's what I'm talking about. That's the excitement I want to see. <laughs> How many use JavaScript map object or a set object or something? OK, thank you. That, that's good, because otherwise I'd have to be like, I can't really go on with the talk then, because it relates to this. So the JavaScript map, the good old JavaScript map, right? Not quite to the array level, obviously, but uh, the map has a set and get, right? You can set keys and values. You can then get the value by giving it the key. Very straightforward, easy to use, built in, it just works. But where does the data live for the JavaScript map object? Just local, it's in the browser, right? But what if we could make a shared map. And we could make it where this side, as you're typing or doing whatever, this side gets it, even though you know, you're over in Asia, we'll pretend, and you're over in Australia. I did meet someone from Australia that came all the way to ng-conf. How cool is that? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so you'll notice that the API on this, now the, the getting the object is a little bit different, but notice that the set and the get are identical. But behind the scenes, this would be a distributed way to send data from there over to here. One of you would like be running over there really fast. I don't know who wants to volunteer to, we'll time you. But it'd be really fast. Now, obviously, if uh, this group does something, you need to know about it, right? Here's what we do. Shared map on, value changed, and then you give it a listener. OK, so now every time you do something, you can know about it. Now, side by side, these are very similar again. But to wrap up this slide, the one on the left is local. The one on the right looks like it's local, but in reality, it could go across the world uh, to hundreds of clients, potentially. OK, so that's kind of the get you thinking. Now let's talk about how this works. All right, so we all have web apps, at least I hope so at this conference. And we're going to have these things called fluid data structures. Now. In order for those to work, we need to have a server. Here's the beauty of this, though. You write zero code for the server. Now, there's kind of three ways you can do this. One is you can run locally for development, which I'll kind of show that at the end. The other is you could stand up your own server, like at your uh, work. And then the final one is you could use a new service. You can stand it up in about probably 60 seconds. It's called Azure Fluid Relay. And that one could also be used. So you have options uh, with this. Now, the way the server works is when the shared map calls the set that we looked at, we need that data to go you know, from here over to here, or something like that. So under the covers, it is WebSockets. I mean, you would kind of guess that. But again, with WebSockets, it's like me and this gentleman here just talk, and then I talk, and, and you're like, I don't, I don't think we're having a conversation here, dude. You're just talking over me. You know? uh, it'd be really hard to understand and sync it up. So, moving on, if we add more clients. So, I don't know, now we have this group, we have this group, this group, you now become the data. You're super important, by the way, I don't want to leave you out, you're the data. Um, as someone over here adds some data, like through the shared map, 
That's gonna go to the server, and the server, use, server uses a very uh, pretty sophisticated algorithm. It's called total order broadcast. What that does is it makes it look simple. It just stamps the operation. Now what that does is when each client now, let me go to the next one here, let's do it again. Now we get number two, let's say. I guess we're typing really slow. The one up top now gets the data. This one gets the data, but the server is just in charge of two main things. First off, it orders. Second off, you'll notice it has storage. If you're gonna collaborate, then we need a way that if you collaborate today and then you're done and then tomorrow, because you've got to catch your flight at some point, um, tomorrow you want to do it again because you're so excited to talk to your ng-conf buddies, right? Then we need a way to uh, bring back up where were we yesterday. So this will take care of the storage for you. And of course, you could hook a database into it at some point. But what's really cool is this. Because the server is so lightweight and you write zero code, each of the clients is responsible for merging in the data. So instead of you and I kind of talking over each other, instead it's like, hey, how you doing? Go ahead. Good. That's great, I'm glad you're doing good. This is a very exciting conversation. Should we talk about weather? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so you get the idea though. It, it syncs up the conversation, if you will. That's all done at the client, which means, guess how our latency is across the network? Super fast, okay, because the server is not getting in the way. All right, now that's a really high level look at how this works. Let's see, kind of, it's like, hey, Dan, all right, that's cool. I, I love the colorful slides, but let's get into the code. So, what I did is I went out to this repo. I just did a search. I wanted to find a really simple kind of to do list because it'd be kind of cool to show an existing repo that I didn't even create the app. And if this is a really, the person that created this did a real nice job. It's super clean. Uh, uses the CDK for drag and drop, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Now it's nice and easy. Um, so I wanted to take this, but add in this collaborative capability into it. And you kind of saw a sneak peek of that earlier. You know, what would that look like? How would you take an existing app and whether it's a data grid or a text box or just a to-do app, uh, keep it simple here, what would you do there? Well, let's walk through it. So they had a, uh, the person that created it, they have you know, a to-do list component as you would kind of expect. And I needed to add the ability to hook up to the server. Okay, so I created a fluid container service and we'll talk about what a container is in just a bit. Now, just kind of for now, imagine that blue box is sort of the, the container to the server aspect. But then I also need a way for you to be able to set data so it goes over to here, right? So I created a fluid model service. Now what'll happen is as that user then types in some data, it'll come into the model service, will already be hooked up to the server, and then the shared map will use some underlying code that's built in to communicate with the server, and then as you saw, send that up to all the connected clients. Pretty cool. All you have to do is call set, and then if you want to get the values, you call get. Pretty straightforward, actually. So, let's focus on this part first. And this is one of the uh, parts that uh, you set it up once in the app. In fact, you could even make this reusable across apps, and then you're good to go. So let's jump on in. So how do you create what's called a fluid container? Now, the way I like to think of it is that shared map is kind of one of those Lego blocks, okay? So we have a, a red Lego block and a green Lego block, and in that, one of those is a shared map. Now the other is kind of a bonus feature I added, and wow, you like all dematerialized all of a sudden. The uh, lights went down, okay. <laughs> like you're still there, right? Okay. All right, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I paid these folks off to, you know. But anyway, so what we wanna do is we have to define what types of collaborative objects are we gonna use so that you can communicate over here and over here and over here. So. We're gonna create what's called a schema. Now, not too hard, it's an object literal. I'm pretty sure you can all do that. And you'll notice this initial objects and it has a shared map and then this signaler, signal manager, that's if I wanna kinda of watch people's mouse positions as we're collaborating because they might be working on different parts of the app. You can do that if you want. Totally optional, but you could do that. All right, so that's the two Lego blocks. Now, you, anyone that has kids at home, I live in Arizona, we have uh, scorpions, 
And I think the only thing worse than stepping on a scorpion is when your kid leaves the Lego blocks out and you're like heading to the restroom or something, just like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> a scorpion might be worse, I don't know. But, uh, you know, we want to put these in a container when we're done at night, right? So you kind of train the kids to clean up uh, once you're done. So we have a container we have to create. Now, you'll notice at the top we have this thing called an Azure client. And that's what I chose to use because I can either work locally or I can hit this Azure Fluid Relay. But you can also hit your own service if you want to do it. Now, to get this container, though, we need to know, did we, I'm going to say we're all in this, already collaborate like yesterday, or is this brand new? Okay, so notice the hash right up there. Yeah, laser is not working, okay. <laughs> notice the hash right up there. So if there is no hash, we must be starting from scratch. And all the hash is is what's called a container ID. It's kind of like your collaboration ID, okay? Now what we're gonna do with that is create a container if we don't have one. So all you do is call client create container and you give it the Lego blocks that makes the container. And then from that, I can actually attach to it and then get the container ID. All right, pretty simple. And then we're gonna add that up as a hash up on top. Now, otherwise, if we have one, what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna go in and say, let's grab the hash because that is kind of the way we collaborate. And then we're gonna get the container from the server. Now, remember the server has some storage involved with it. Now, what's cool about this is once that hash is there, I could manually, of course, copy the URL. I could email it and say, hey, you know, all of you here, come join me. Let's collaborate. Let's collaborate. Um, and, you know, on whatever it is. I mean, I'm sure after we're done, you're all going to be like, Dan, I'd really like to collaborate on that to-do list because it's just so phenomenal. I've never seen that before. Um, <laughs> all right. Now, that's kind of the, you know, set it up once and you're good to go. Um, and I should have done more dark slides because now it's like I can see everybody again, you know? Uh, this is, it's better the other one. Anyway, uh, the next thing we need is how are we going to communicate between our client into all the other people? We already have the connection. We have the container. We're good to go. Now we need to use that shared map and we need to get that Lego block out of the container, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this shared map, and here's what we're going to do. So first off, kind of notice the properties up top. They're pretty simple. We have a shared map type. That comes from Fluid Framework, obviously. We have the to-do and the done items. I have a behavior subject with a phenomenal name. Look at the observable. If you have any questions on what type of observable that was and how it came about, I'm pretty sure I answered it. <laughs> Don't name it that way, but you get the idea. So what we're going to do is initialize Fluid. I'm going to say, if we don't have a shared map at this point, maybe it's the first time we've loaded, um, go call get fluid data. Now, that was the last code I just showed you with the container, uh, create, or get, or whatever. Now, from there, I'm going to reach into the, the Tupperware container, whatever, whatever Rubbermaid container, whatever one you use at home, and uh, I'm going to grab that shared map out of it. That's the Lego block. And I'm going to store it. Now, that's cool. I can now call get and set, as you're going to see in a moment. But how do I know when you and you and you send data? We need to sync that up. Now, anyone remember earlier when I showed the JS map? There's an on uh, with the shared map. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to call sync to do's data using uh, the shared map that we're going to talk about. Let's go ahead and move to that. And look at that code right there. Eh, pretty simple, right? We just saw that earlier. Now this, I think, is actually kind of magical because, I mean, not quite as magical as what Josh did with the whole book thing. That was, you know, next level magic. <laughs> um, so I think it's pretty magical because with that one line of code, and I'll talk about the stuff up top there in just a moment, you're now syncing with everybody that's coming in you can get the data, and then it will make sure it gets put out there in the proper order so we're not talking over each other, all right? Now, I, I like to call it magic. I don't know. You might call it witchcraft. Everybody thinks of things differently, but you get the idea. So, so what we're going to do then is we know data's coming in if this gets called. So we're going to go ahead and call the get, all right? Pretty easy. Now, you'll see a little behavior subject there. I'm gonna, I use that just because I like subjects and uh, observables. 
So I'll then send that data along, and then the UI can subscribe to it. Pretty standard Angular. All right, so the last thing we haven't covered is how do I update the data? Well, pretty easy. You already, you already know the answer. You call set, you give it the key and the value. In this case, we're doing just simple arrays, because we know arrays are loved. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, that's going to automatically, again, under the covers, just doing that, everybody that's connected to the same container will now get this data. And then it will come in super quick, and then it'd be up to us, of course, to bind it and display it in our UI. Pretty easy. Now, that gets us back to what I started with. So every time we type register for ng-conf here, let's walk through this. Now this person says, yep, yeah, that's definitely we're doing that. And then uh, Ward Bell's coming up. Got to catch Ward's talk, all right? Ward's phenomenal if you don't know him. So we got to see Ward's talk. And we're like, okay, at the end of the day, all right, we did that. Now, I might also want to see who's in the app. I showed this a little bit earlier, but notice as we move around, we can get all the cursor movements, and uh, Fluid has what's called an audience. If you're gonna collaborate, you kinda need to know who you're collaborating with, right? So you have an audience that you can get to and do all that, and then as I refresh that, I probably already moved past it, the data's gonna be there tomorrow, it's gonna be there the next day, because it'll take care of the storage, and at some point, you're gonna move ahead, and you're probably gonna put this in your database, or something. All right. Now, is that all you can do, to-dos? Yeah, that's all I got for you. If you're building to-dos at work, this is phenomenal. <laughs> all right. No, it's not a toy. So here's an actual application that Autodesk has been using with Fluid Framework. Now, you'll notice we have two VR people in there, and then they also have a viewer for just, like us, in the browser. This is actually using Fluid Framework as they expand that engine, you'll see all the properties up to the right there. Now, shared map, which is key value pair, that's not the only game in town. There's a lot more you can do. This is an open source contribution from Autodesk. It's called Shared Tree. As the VR folks are changing the X, Y, Z, or whatever properties, it's going to take care of syncing the tree, and that's kind of like an XML or JSON structure across all the connected clients. And this could be for architecture, it could be for engineering. I mean, the, the sky's the limit. Now, I personally am not building, I, to me this seems like a cool app, I'm not building those type of apps. I'm doing more data. So if we get back to what I kind of started with, what can you build? Well, if you wanted to do like meeting notes, like you want the equivalent of you know, Google Docs, but in your app, your own version, if you will, then you could use what's called a shared string. It's for people typing at the same time. Pretty cool. If you want to collaborate on a, a data grid, well, shared matrix, because you have rows and columns. And then, of course, you're all going to leave here wanting to build to-do apps. And when you have key value pairs, you can just do shared map. Now, there's even more than that. We're going to kind of cut it off there and move along. But that's what you can build with this. So I hope that this kind of, first off, makes everybody, when you get back to work, go, do we have any scenarios where collaboration would take this up a notch? All right, because I don't think we think through that. That's, it's kind of a new concept, if you will. And I'll bet you some of you do. I can think of several apps I built over the years that were painful that this could benefit our uh, customers, our clients. So with that, thanks so much. Uh, really enjoyed talking with everyone this week at NGConf, and we'll see you next time.